Hey, what is up everybody? Zero Fats here coming at you on behalf of AdventuresOnTheRiver.com. Uh, I have a storage unit, as many of you know, where I store a lot of my, well, I store a lot of my inventory, my self-fulfilled inventory uh, that, I, that I'm not sending to Amazon, that I'm kind of, you know, running myself. And a lot of it is for feedback management, I'll admit, um, but some of it is still just, you know, books and stuff that I haven't sent off to FBA yet. Um, but that's not the point of the story. So at my storage unit, um, at my storage unit facility, uh, they have a reuse area, uh, a place where people who have, this is an indoor storage unit, people who have storage units there, um, they can get rid of stuff and just put it over in this reuse area. And other people that have storage units there, if they want it, they can just get it. Well, I can't tell you how much money I have made off of stuff that people have just you know, put in that reuse area. But, that's not what I wanted to talk about either. Um, what I want to talk about is, well, it starts with this little guy. This is a little radio-controlled helicopter, right? Um, and this I found one day, about two years ago, sitting in my reuse, uh, in my, my storage facility reuse area. And I saw this and I fell in love with it. And I thought, you know what, man? And I didn't fall in love with this, per se. Um, I fell in love with the idea of getting this to fly again and taking my kids out in a field uh, and, and flying this with them, right? I fell in love with that idea. Um, now, uh, I had the vision of it, plain as day in my head, when I grabbed this that day. But then, you know, it was on to the next thing and on to the next thing and... Pretty soon, here we are, two years later, and here this thing is, sitting on my shelf. Never been fixed up. Never took it out in the field with my kids and flew it. Why? Why does that happen? That's on me, right? That's on me. And it's a drag every time I look at it. Why do things like that happen? Why do we have this intention of doing something and then we don't follow through? It's a good question, you know, and I'm kind of strange. I'm a little bit of a strange person because I, I do think about things like that. Why didn't I follow through on that? You know, I had the vision of it in my mind as plain as day. How come I didn't follow through on it? And I got a couple of theories about why things like that happen. Um, the harshest one is that uh, it didn't matter enough to me, or it didn't matter enough to me to make that happen. Things that I really care about, things that really matter, I make happen. And, you know, it's sad to face that reality because there's probably a little bit of truth to that. But are there other reasons why uh, we don't follow through all the time? Um, you know, some of it could be fear. You know, some of it could be fear of failure. Uh, some of it could be um, you know, indifference. Some of it could be indifference. You know, we don't know if we necessarily need to do that. It seems kind of unnecessary. It's not something we really need to do. It's kind of a waste of time. Um, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why people fail to take action. Uh, uh, why people fail to do things they think might be cool or whatever. Um, but take that and put it aside for a second because I wanted to bring up the, uh, ra the radio controlled helicopter just because I want you to know I'm human. I'm just like you guys. I don't always take action just like you guys. Sometimes I fail. Um, even when I know I should. I'm looking at that radio helicopter and I know that uh, I should fix that up and, and go play with my kids in the field with it. Absolutely, I need to do that. And is it a top priority? It should be above everything, right? It should. But there it sits on my shelf, you know, inoperable. So I, I tell you guys that story because I want you to know uh, I'm just like you. Um, in some things, I, I'm, I'm able to really put at the forefront and take action, like making money, like making money independently. It's something that motivates me, I'm passionate about, and I can just like take, I can just be very, very quick to take action and be decisive about it. But I want you to know we all have our battles, you know, we all have our battles and uh, we all have our things that we have trouble taking action on. Um, nobody's perfect. Um, here is something I wanted to talk about. Um, 
when I used to work at um, a, a department store, uh, my last job I ever had was at a department store, um, and I uh, I fixed things for them. I fixed things, you know. Not unlike that little uh, radio-controlled helicopter. It's not going to be that hard for me to fix that. Um, but I fixed things for them. And, um, you know, uh, kind of got this reputation because um, I talk about, you know, making money online and, uh, you know, different ways to go about it and stuff. And I kind of got this reputation and uh, as a, the guy who knows how to make money online. And people would ask me, hey, dude, how can I make money on the Internet? Right? And, uh, you know, it kind of came down to uh, a funny little thing because people would ask me how to make money on the Internet and I would uh, try to explain it to them. Um, and I'd figure out when I started trying to really get into it and explain to them ways they could do it, their eyes kind of just kind of glazed over and they lost interest. Um, so it, 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 it was like, wow, that didn't really work out. I wasn't really helping anybody by, by doing that. So I try to give a real simplified version, and still, a lot of times they would just fail to take action. Uh, AdventuresOnTheRiver.com is a website that costs fourteen ninety seven a month to, to have access to. Um, the, you know, my members are awesome, uh, and they pay fourteen ninety seven for access to that that site, and it's it's meant to really really help them get ahead. Um, now, this is something that I would try to give like a free code. To people I worked with and people I knew just to give them a leg up and I found that most of them wouldn't even activate the code they never even got on there they completely failed to take action even though they listened to what I say it sounds good sounds good sounds good but for whatever reason they couldn't take action um, now another thing that I notice uh, that people have trouble with besides just like getting off the ground is they have trouble like figuring out what to target for like a niche like once someone decides to take action and uh, once someone decides to you know fix the helicopter so to speak once someone decides on it and they set their mind to it and they go for it um, a lot of times they have trouble figuring out what to do I, I mean I know because I've been there I remember I bought Google Sniper. I don't know if anybody is familiar with Google Sniper, but I bought that program, you know, a little while back when it came out. Um, and like, I tried to follow it to a T, right? To a fault, I tried to follow it. Um, and I ended up creating this. My first Google Sniper site was like this little site about like making money on surveys, right? Which was completely like not congruent with who I am, you know, totally like opposite of of who I am and, and what I'm about, it had nothing to do with me and obviously it failed miserably, it didn't work. Um, but I was following those directions to a T and, uh, and I was one of those people, you know, because whenever you get one of these how to make money online courses, a lot of times that first step or one of the first steps is how do you pick a niche, pick, picking out a niche, how to pick out a niche and a lot of times they'll send you to like Google Ads, AdWords and uh, or a, or a similar keyword uh, keyword uh, tool and try to get you to find the the things that have a very low competition and very high search rates and you're you're looking for things like that to find a niche and while that's all good and great um, it, it really comes down to this um, it really comes down to this and this is this is this is my belief these are my opinions. Um, Forget about Google AdWords for a second. Forget about keyword tools and all that crap. Forget about all that. Um, let's come back to this. Let's come back to this guy right here. It's something I was interested in, right? I had a reason why I cared about this. I had a vision. I had a vision of me playing with my kids with this radio-controlled helicopter in the field and I thought how great that would be to teach my kids how to fly this thing even though I have no idea how to fly one of these I don't have any idea how to fly one of these I'm pretty confident I can fix it but I have no idea how to fly one I've never done it before but I had that vision in my mind and it excited me so here, here's what I'm telling you um, when it comes time to Pick a niche, okay? I don't care if you're going to write an ebook, 
I don't care if you're going to make a YouTube channel. I don't care if you're going to make a website. I don't care what you're doing. But when it comes time, when it comes down to the fact that you want to make money now online and you're not playing around anymore and you're serious and now you want to figure out what you want to make money in, what your niche is going to be, turn off the internet. Turn off the instructions. I mean, you know, if, if, if you're checking out AdventuresOnTheRiver.com uh, or if you're checking out any of these other programs to help you make uh, money online, turn that stuff off for a minute. And I say that because there's two things going on here, okay? Now, it's good to get education, and it's good to educate yourself. Now, when you're, you're on AdventuresOnTheRiver.com, and you're watching my videos, and you're reading the articles, and, and you're checking it out, and you're trying to learn, that's awesome. Now, you're working that analytical part of your brain, and that's awesome. That's great. You're learning. Take some notes. Figure it out. Cool. But when it comes time to figure out what you want to do and how you want to proceed, turn all that crap off, okay? Because now you need to engage a different part of your brain, okay? And it's not that analytical follow instructions part of your brain anymore. Now you need to engage the creative side of your brain, okay? You need to think about art, right? You need to think about the artistic side of it, right? What do you want to do? What sounds cool to you, right? What makes sense? What seems interesting, okay? And, and it's not just like picking your niche, okay? It's not just picking your niche. It's, it's everything, man. I mean, it's everything. When it comes time to make an opt-in form, you know, make it make a squeeze page. When it comes time to put a cover on that ebook, okay, it, it's it, it's all engaging your creative side, okay. And people will give you a formula. Here, here's how you do it. Here, here's how you do it. You know, I I can give you a formula. I can give you a formula of what's worked for me. But in the end, and ultimately, I mean, you have to kind of engage that creative side. So take your dogs for a walk, right? Or go sit at your kitchen table and listen to some music, right? And, and like, just kind of think about what you like to do, right? And I'm not talking about, like, making money online, okay? Because, look, we all had things we like to do before we started trying to make money online. And then when we started trying to make money online, that quickly, like, consumed everything else. And now that's our only hobby, right? Well, I got news for you. The online marketing niche is very competitive, while many other niches are not very competitive and a lot easier to make money in, okay? Um, I'll give you an example, um, and it's an example you've probably heard before, but uh, think about like, like the Nutribullet, right? You know, I made that Nutribullet YouTube channel, um, and, and like, it was just about this one thing the Nutribullet. And all the videos I did were just about the Nutribullet. You know, then I created a, a website to support it, blendingforyourhealth.com, and uh, it was just about blenders. You know, it kind of broadened the scope out a little bit. Uh, it gave me some room to move away from just the Nutribullet, but, you know, Nutribullet YouTube channel funneled traffic back to website, right? And it's all in the same little niche, right? Created an ebook. Put it up on Amazon. That leveraged tech traffic back to my website. In that little niche about the Nutribullet, right? So think about it. I mean, any kind of product that has a following you could use. The uh, George Foreman Grill. Think about that. The George Foreman Grill. It's a stupid product, but we're all familiar with it. We're all familiar with it. A lot of us have one. You know, I don't have one anymore, but I used to have one. Many people have those little tabletop, countertop uh, grills that you can cook on. A lot of people have those. Um, you, you can create like a, a niche, like whether it be an ebook, whether it be a YouTube channel, whether it be a small website around just that one thing, right? And already has a following, right? It could be like a Hans steamer. Um, it could be like a Martin guitar. Um, it could be like anything specific, right? And you could kind of form a niche around that thing. 
depending on you know what you want to do whether it be a YouTube channel or a Facebook page or, or whatever whatever your points of leverage are hopefully you understand they're all going to leverage back to like something you own like they're all going to leverage back to like a website and that's what we kind of teach about an affiliate command um, <laughs> I'm kind of going a little too far into this but what I really just wanted to get across in this video is that number one um, everybody struggles with failing to act everybody does we all struggle with failing to execute uh, and then uh, it's important just to remember, you know, you have to execute. You have to remember that vision that you initially thought. Like with me, I had the vision of me and my kids running through the field playing with this little radio controlled helicopter. I mean, I need to latch onto that and I need to put everything else down and get it done. Right? And that's just all there is to it. Now for you, that might be buying an information product, you know. That might be uh, finishing an ebook. That might be starting a YouTube channel. Um, you just have to do it. I mean, you have to put everything down for a minute and do it, you know. The one thing you control and that you can control is the most valuable thing you own, and that's your time, right? You control that. You absolutely control it. You might not make a lot of money, um, but you have as much time as every other man on this earth. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to say, okay, I have 24 hours in a day. Now, I absolutely plan to put this much time towards this thing and I'm gonna do that right and then get your education fire up that analytical side of your brain and get your education with that product study research and then put the analytical part of your brain down and engage that creative side of your brain and figure out how you're gonna take all the education and turn it into something cool right don't be like me with the Google sniper thing um, because let me explain to you about the Google Sniper thing. It started out with me trying to make a stupid like survey sniper site, which sucked. It failed. Made a few more uh, sites. They made a tiny bit of money, but not really a lot. Nothing to speak of. What happened was the principle of Google Sniper was sound, right? You know, make a, a you know just dedicate you know make a small little website you know based on just a really drilled down niche really drill it down right and that's all that thing is about it's not a bunch of topics it's just one little topic all we're gonna talk about on this website is drinking a glass of water that's all we're gonna talk about we're gonna interview people who've drank a glass of water we're gonna show different glasses that you could drink water out of and uh, you know we're gonna take pictures of people drinking water and like it's all gonna be about this one little thing right um, and it, it worked in theory, but when I tried to put it in practice, it didn't work. I was following the directions too closely, all right? I didn't put my analytical side of my brain down. I didn't disengage the analytical follow directions side of my brain and, like, engage the creative, how can I do this in my own way part of my brain, right? Now, when you start in acting, when you start engaging that creative side of your brain and trying to do things in your own way, yeah, you're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes, but it doesn't matter. As long as you understand the principle of what, what is supposed to be working, then you will figure it out, okay? My exploits with Google Sniper ended up becoming a whole full-blown product, and that was easy YouTube money method, right? I took the principles behind Google Sniper, the ideas of, you know, making a small, making something that's really, really drilled down and micro-niched, I took those principles, I combined them with some of the principles I learned in uh, Ken Envoy's Site Build It, which is all about authority sites and creating authority sites. I took the, some of those principles from both of those places, kind of mixed it up into my own thing, and created Easy YouTube Money Method, which ended up being my own product. So I can't say that the $900 I spent on Site Build It and the fifty dollars or so, I guess a little over a hundred dollars when you count hosting costs and stuff, I spent on Google Sniper. I can't say those were failures. I used my education and I created something completely new that paid for it all. And it worked. But to do it, to get those things to work for me, and this is my whole point of this video, I had to engage that creative side of my brain. I couldn't just follow the instructions. I had to create something I had to engage that creative side of my brain and figure out how to do it in my own way right 
take the methods, learn them, understand the essence of what's trying to be taught, and then figure out a way to engage it, like in your own way. And to do that, you have to put down the analytical side of your brain that wants to follow instructions. You have to put the instructions away and like take your dog for a walk or something, uh, go to the grocery store uh, and listen to some music and think about ways you could do things. Think, <laughs> sit down at your table, plot it out on paper, do a mind map, figure out what you could do creatively that might work, you know? And is there a chance it might not work? Absolutely! There's a good chance it might not work. Um, but this is the road to success. Like, this is the path, right? You know, you, you're a beginner, and then you become like a journeyman, and journeymen fail, right? But this is the path to master, right? Beginner, journeyman, and then one day you wake up, and all of a sudden you know more than everybody else, and you're a master. <laughs> and you didn't even realize that happened. And it's amazing how that works out. But uh, don't think that you're going to um, skip the learning curve. It's impossible to skip the learning curve. You will fail. Now, you're going to speed up the process if you disengage that analytical side of your brain that wants to follow instructions to a T like, and engage that creative side of your brain. And I'm specifically talking about, I'm specifically talking to people who want to make money online, like with ebooks and websites and affiliate marketing and stuff like that. And I'm not talking as much to the people who sell physical goods on Amazon, um, because Amazon takes care of a lot of that creativity for you, so you don't have to worry about it quite as much. Um, but uh, I, I haven't really met anybody, honestly, I haven't met anybody who's been selling on Amazon any length of time that didn't start thinking what else could I do that might be a little bit easier um, what else could I do that might you know be a little bit less effort or what else could I do where I would have a little bit more control over my business um, everybody gets to that point you know if you sell on Amazon or if you sell on eBay everybody gets to that point where they want to figure out a different way to do it. I mean, all you have to do is look, I mean, yeah, you guys heard me doing it probably, you know, I'm uh, probably, I, I never set out to be like the, you know, the Mr. Picker turned ebook guy, never set out to be that guy. Um, yeah, you might have heard me preaching about ebooks for a while now, but look around at all the other pickers, all the other people who talk about picking on YouTube, uh, and you'll see a lot of those people are starting to do ebooks now. You'll see a lot of those people are starting to try to find other ways to leverage what they do into alternate revenue streams. I mean, that's a natural progression. So, anyways, I'm getting a little off topic. Uh, the point is, my big point is, there's two things going on in your brain. You can split it right down the middle. You got a part of your brain that wants to follow instructions, and you got a part of your brain that wants to write music, all right? And what I'm saying is, you have to put down the part of your brain that wants to follow instructions once you've learned the essence of what is being taught, and then pick up the part of your brain that wants to write music, because that's how you succeed man that's how you're gonna make money so anyways this video has been long-winded uh, let me just end this by saying uh, if you're watching this video right now it is after 8 p.m. and we are nearing the end of our Black Friday sale um, I am giving away 20 full-time lifetime access passes on adventures on the river .com. I'm not giving away um, they are $147. It gives you lifetime access to adventuresontheriver.com. No monthly reoccurring fees. Lifetime membership access. $147. In addition to that, you also will be getting full access to Affiliate Command once it's launched on its own website. Uh, the true form of Affiliate Command that's going to be released to the public. Um, and also, you will be getting full access to Easy YouTube Money Method 2.0 when it's launched in the spring. Also, you will be getting uh, a very special email address to contact me directly. Um, special email address just for the inner circle. Uh, there are only 20 of these passes now. Well, actually, there's not a lot less. There's only a handful left at this point, actually. Um, but, you know, when this video airs at 8, um, I'm thinking there should still be some left unless like you know five or six people like bam 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 all at once then there might not be any left but there's still a handful of these passes left so if you're watching this video and you want to be part of the inner circle uh, people who I would mastermind with um, 
and it's just like 20 people, you know, 20 people, uh, small group of people that I can manage, that I can handle and just talk to them. If they have problems, questions about whatever, um, I, can, I can talk to them and stuff like that. Help them with their product creation, uh, ebook creation, help them with, um, you know, physical product sales, stuff like that. Uh, just inner circle type stuff. Um, mastermind. So anyways, if you're interested in that, get over there, sign up for your lifetime access pass, um, and I will see you in the inner circle area on adventuresontheriver.com. Hope this video has been helpful to you guys. Peace.